Hi guys, welcome to another tutorial by Melodorus Creations. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make your raspberry stitch beanies into um, teddy bear hats. I'll be showing you how to make the ears and also how to make the ear flaps and the braids. So, take your, your beanie in the size that uh, you made it in. Hi guys, I wanted to throw this little bit of edited video in here um, because I've been making a lot more of these adult hats and I realized something. Uh, when I first designed these raspberry stitch beanies, I made it to where you wouldn't need ear flaps because a lot of people complained with beanies that they don't come down far enough to cover the ears. And so I just decided that uh, I was going to make these a little extra long so that they would cover people's ears. But when you turn it into a bear hat, that causes a problem because they're already coming down so far. So for the adult hats, I was doing, uh, I believe it was 17 rows or 19, I can't remember. But when you're making it or if you decide you want to make uh, the raspberry stitch beanie into a bear hat, then only do 15 rows of raspberry stitches before you start your, your rim. Also, I've noticed on the adult hats, I always end up with 74 stitches. So I always have to reduce by at least two stitches before I start my other four rows. So um, make sure you always cut your stitches every uh, hat that you make. Make sure you have the appropriate number. Do a few decreases if you need to. Um, and that's it. Um, so I would say for the baby, baby size, the newborn size, only do 13 rows before you do, do the ear flaps. All the other sizes, do 15 rows. What you need for this project is your beanie that uh, you made from the raspberry stitch beanie. And I can give you the link. It's here in the corner. And you need worst weight yarn, a 4.5 millimeter hook or a size 7 hook for the US, at least two stitch markers, and you're going to need a tapestry needle to sew on your ears. So get your 4.5 millimeter hook, make my slip knot, let me get just a little closer here for you. Okay, to start this off, what you need to do is chain two. And again, we're going to do this like we did with the beanie. We're going to go into the second chain from the hook, the first chain that you did. And we're going to be working six single crochets into this second chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we need to count back, two, four, six. This is my first stitch. So I'm just, I'm not gonna slip stitch to connect. I'm just gonna start working my second round. So round two, we wanna do two single crochets in each of the six stitches, which will give us 12 single crochets. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now if you want to place a stitch marker here you can, but I don't think we really need to because we're going to be changing stitches. So for round three, you want to slip stitch to the next stitch, chain one, and turn your project to where the back's facing you. Now you want to, in the same stitch here that you slip stitched into, you want to put a single crochet, a double crochet in the same stitch, 
and then a single crochet in the same stitch. Now we want to skip one stitch and then the next do the same thing. Single crochet, double crochet, and a single crochet. Upset little guy out there in the park. Okay, you want to continue to do this for the remaining of the round. You skip one stitch and I'll show you in slow motion. Now come to the end of round three and what we want to do, this is our first raspberry that we did, that single crochet, double crochet, and single crochet all in the same stitch. What we want to do is go into this first single crochet and you want to slip stitch into it. It's just going to tighten up the space that's in between. So do your best to tighten that space in between there so that you don't have a gap. Now in the same stitch, the single crochet, you want to do the raspberry stitch, which is single crochet, double crochet, and single crochet, all in the same stitch. Now we're going to be working the raspberry stitch as normal now. We're going to skip two. And in this single crochet, you want to work a raspberry stitch of single crochet, double crochet, and single crochet. Again, skip two and work into the single crochet.
continue to do this all the way around. Okay, I'm back up here. This is my first stitch of the round. And what I want to do now is the same as I did in the last round for round four. For round five, you do the same thing except you won't be slip stitching to begin the round. You just go right into that single crochet and work a raspberry stitch. Single crochet, double crochet, and a single crochet. Now you want to place a marker here just so you know that this is the first stitch of the round. Now for round five and for round six you're going to be working the raspberry stitches exactly like you did for round four. So do two more rounds rows five and six just like you did round four. Okay I just got done with round six and I'm making this for a uh, size one to three if you want to make it for an adult hat and you want bigger ears, feel free to repeat the last row one or two more times to make the ear bigger. What I want to do now is once I'm done is slip stitch into the next stitch, chain one, leaving yourself a long tail to sew onto your hat. You can remove your marker now. Turn the ear inside out. And this is your first little ear. Now make one more of those and I'll show you how to sew them onto your hat. Now that we got both our ears done, let's thread our tapestry needle. We'll try to move the I should say I try to fold the ears where I have the tail on one side of it, like this. It's just going to make it easier to sew on. So what I do is I come up. The first one isn't terribly important because it's basically the marker and where the other ones will be. I usually start here somewhere. This is the flat part. Here, like above one of the raspberries. Just pull my little ear down, then I'll adjust it. And I want to kind of fold it to where it has a little entrance in there. I'll fold it like this, and then I'll just start working my way, making sure, best I can, that it stays straight. I'll come up through the hat and then I'm coming up through both rows. And pull it tight. And then once I got it going somewhat good, then I'm going to work my way back up. Once I get to the bottom, I'll work my way back up to the top. Just making sure it's shaped good. Just want to make sure that I bring my tail here. I mean, my, not my tail, but my uh, my ear. I want to make sure that it's bent. I might put it on this side. It's very difficult <laughs> at this angle. I'm trying to film this, so I kind of got it bent and attached here. I still want that fold. So I'm going to come in through this part of the hat and attach it just a little forward some just to draw it up just a little more. I'm trying to keep cupping it to ensure that it's going to stay cupped because you're going to have to sew like I did down this way and then pull up your ear and sew it a little forward here. 
So that way you have a little cup here. And I'm going to go along the back here and do the same. Um, just going back and forth just to secure that it's not going to be pulled off because little kids will grab onto these ears. So just continue to do that. I just got my ear on there. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to turn my head inside out. My tail here. And I'm going to work it behind a few of the stitches. And do what they call an embroidery knot. Pull it to where you have a little bit of loop left. And then tie it. to do this three times or so. And then once I'm ready, I'll feed it down through the stitches along the ears on the other side so it won't poke through. Just feed my tail to hide it. And there is the first ear. Let's get our other ear. Now with the second ear, I usually go make my hat like this and then use my other ear as a guide. So this one started on this side here, so I'm going to put my needle the opposite. And my hat's folded in half, so hopefully that's going to help keep it even. So I'm going to feed my ear on this side. Now, flatten it out again. See where my connection is. See if I'm going to like it here because this is the time to adjust if you want. So much better if you have an actual head to stick this hat on, fake head. So much easier. And I don't like where it is. I think I'm going to have to pull it back some. This is how I usually do my second ear. Yeah, I think this is about halfway point, so let me try here. See if I like it. And you do the same thing because once it's sewn on, it's on there. Okay, I think I like that better. So I'm going to continue just to sew this one on with a little fold in it, just like I did this one. I done some of my ears. I didn't pay attention. This is the back part. I really should have done it on this side and make it more clean. But that's my bad. I don't pay attention to as many details when I'm doing a tutorial. Okay. Uh, let's get our yarn again here. The ones are the same color and we're going to be making the ear flaps on the side. Now again I'm making it for one, two, three year old. So I'm going to be making it with 12 single crochets. If you're making it for a baby hat I would do 10 and if you're doing an adult I would do 14. So what I do is I'll put my hat like this and then starting from the ear down I'll make sure it's folded in half and then I'll count up my stitches from here and I'm doing ages one to three years so I'm going to be doing 12. If you're doing 10, you can do the same principle, or 14. 
So I have two stitches here, one, two. So I'm going to be counting in twos as I go along. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. These are my two stitches. That will mark the beginning of the twelve and the end of the twelve. And now, depending on which side of the hat you're doing, you want to crochet with the stitches out. So I'm, I crochet right to left. So I'm going to start on this side to make sure that my stitches are forward. So get your yarn and attach your slip knot. Starting in the first marked place, you want to attach your yarn by single crochet method. Just pull up a loop and pull through two loops. That's your first. Now go into the second stitch. Do a single crochet. A single crochet in all of your stitches up to your marker again. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. When you get to the end, you want to chain one and turn your work. You're going to be working back and forth in rows. For this round, you're going to be working one single crochet in each of the twelve stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Chain one and turn. Now for the third row of the ear flap, you want to do a decrease, single crochet decrease at the beginning and at the end. So you want to go in, pull up a loop, go in through the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through all three loops. Then you want to single crochet in the next eight stitches. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, leaving us with two stitches left to do our decrease. Pull up a loop, go on the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through all three loops. Chain one and turn. And we're going to be doing this again for every row decreasing in the first and the last stitch. So, again, single crochet decrease, single crochet in the next six stitches, two, three, four, five, oops, five and six, and then single crochet decrease. Chain one and turn. Again, single crochet decrease in the first stitch, then single crochet in the next four stitches, and then do a single crochet decrease. Chain one and turn. Single crochet decrease. Single crochet in the next two stitches. And then do a single crochet decrease. Chain one and turn. 
and now you want to do single crochet decrease and a single crochet decrease and these holes made here by doing the two decreases are what we're going to be attaching our yarn to to make our braids we want to chain one leave ourselves a bit of a tail to be worked in with the tapestry needle flip my head over here I'm just going to work my tail down and my stitches here I'm going to do it now to get it out of the way and you'll want to do the same thing for the other so remove your tails and again I like to this is my ear flap done so it helps I'm going to fold it in half and then from there I'm going to flatten up my rim and my hat okay now I've got it in half and I get my my hook here and use it as a counter again so I've got two four my stitches aren't lined up very well I got kind of a third on the end it's not even so I'm just gonna have to count on two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve See if that's even two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay. Now attach your markers. Beginning of the twelve and the end of the twelve. And again, move your hat to where you'll be working your ear flap with the right side of the stitches facing you. Again, you want to attach it at the marker with a single crochet. So, again, you want to make the ear flap exactly the same way. Single crochet in the next 12 stitches or 10 stitches or 14 stitches, whatever you're making it for. And then you'll do back the other direction, 12, and then you're going to start your decreases on around, I mean, row 3. So I'll see you back here when you're done. We just got done with our ear flaps and we got our ears on and now we want to attach braids. So there's not one sure way <laughs> to do the braids because uh, everybody likes different lengths and different thicknesses. So I'm just going to say for this tutorial, um, get about 28 strings. So choose the length that you want about the you know because it's going to shrink when you do the braids so maybe a little longer than what you want and then bend it in half like this and then pull it to the next end of the string here and that's what I do anyway and I fold it here and then I'll bring it down to the other end where my other loop is and fold it in half and go back this way keep going back and forth until I have about um, 28 or so of these and then I'll always end where I cut my yarn here so that my tail is going to be cut the same place as my other one ends and then I'll just get my scissors and cut all my loops that are on the same end okay so do that Get about 28 or so or more if you want a thicker braid. Okay. 
I got uh, on the end and I cut my tails and cut my loops. And now, on this end, I have nothing but loops. I'm going to pick out 14. So it's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and at 14. Because they're in half here. So it's going to be about seven on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I got seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so they're going to be in seven, seven strands apiece for a total of 14. So I'm just going to move this other seven over there out of my way and take this first seven make sure that it's evened up at the ends okay now these last two stitches that you did were decrease decrease so like I said the stitches above kinda left a hole so you can use these two holes to attach your braids. I'm going to go in through this first one, get my loop here, pull it through that hole, and now this loop that you have here, you want to pull all this excess string through to complete your knot, and then just pull tighten. And get your other seven strands making sure that they're even. Go through your other hole here. I'm going to attach it the same way. Now we have double the amount that we had before. And you just want to try to make it as even as possible. So I have three, seven on this side. And then you have three, four, five, six, seven on this side. Okay. Now since the break here is going to be double the thickness you want to separate how many you have by half here. So I have, not by half, but by at least two. So you have six, or I have seven, I should say. I'm going to put about three on one side, and then even it out a little. I'm going to put only two on this side. So 
all my braids should be about the same thickness. So now you braid. Now when you do this, I usually hold my hat between uh, my knees or something like that. You want to have your hat secured on something. So just continue to braid as long as you want. And when you hold it, your hat with something, you can make this end part even tighter, which is what I'm going to do. So continue to braid, and I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, I got a lot of tail left over. That's okay. I got my braid as long as I want it. So what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> what I do to fasten to my braids so that they don't come unraveled is here's my braids here. Let's come on, hat. My braids are so long it's hard to show you. Okay, what I do is I just tie a knot. See here's my braid. You can do it with any, but it's best if you know you take one that's under that would come over next in some fashion so that it has something in between it and tie it to the farthest one. Just like that. And then I usually switch to this one, which was the one that was in front, and tie it. Then I'll get this other one and tie it again. Putting at least three knots in it. Like that. Then I get my scissors. I make this as long as I want. How much of a pom pom you want on the end. And then cut. And now you want to do the same for the other one, but just make sure whenever you make your other braid that you compare it to the other one. So when you start to make your knots here, you want to at least make sure the braid is here, even with with this one. And then make your knots with that one as well and tie your, cut your pom-poms. Okay, I finished. Got my braids done. And everything's done, and I hope that you were able to finish yours just as uh, easily. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you're making this for a little girl, maybe you could just add like a flower or something, like next to the ear somewhere, <laughs> you know, just to add a little touch, or maybe a bow. I think it would look really pretty. So I hope you liked this tutorial. Please stay tuned for much more tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share this video if you liked this video. Thanks for watching.